So fundamentally, this talk is really about kind of three key questions that we find in any sort of uh, project or, or program that involves any sort of component with bias and equity. And those are, how do we define equity in a particular policy context? Uh, how do we improve the equity and fairness of our machine learning models given that definition? And how do we think about balancing trade-offs, particularly how do policymakers think about balancing trade-offs between equity, efficiency, and their constrained resources and the goals surrounding these um, different questions? And of course, uh, um, the really hard, challenging problem in a lot of uh, these cases is figuring out you know, policy goals and uh, stakeholder preferences and how those actually map to the actual analytical problem that you're thinking about. And so I'm gonna spend just a couple of minutes talking about some of the, the tools and kind of frameworks we use to, to think about those questions uh, before really getting into the case study. And, and this is kind of one of them where we think a lot about you know, the uh, thousands of, of different, essentially, ways that you could think about fairness um, and how you could kind of formalize that and turn it into something that you measure. And a lot's been said about that at this conference and in the literature. Um, and here, you know, we kind of wanted to put down on paper a, a way to structure our thinking about this, not in a prescriptive way, but as a way of, of sort of starting the conversation and kind of guiding that conversation with policymakers and stakeholders that we work with. And so we kind of built this as a, as a fairness tree to, to help think about that. And it's, it's discussed in more detail in the, the paper itself. Um, but here I'll just kind of highlight that the, uh, the particular case that I'll be talking about, we thought about recall as a particularly salient fa um, fairness metric. Um, and that's, of course, also a true positive rate or sensitivity, but also like what uh, Hart and others have talked about as um, sort of equality of opportunity. Um, but even once you've figured out, like, how am I going to measure fairness? How am I going to think about fairness in this context? You also have these trade-offs and these competing goals that you have to deal with. And, uh, and so our kind of structure of thinking about that and helping uh, take this kind of nebulous concept of, of these trade-offs and turn it into to a little bit more concrete analysis is sort of presenting uh, those policymakers with like a menu of options, thinking about the different ways that they could take the, the program as it is, the modeling that's been done, and apply kind of concepts of, of fairness and equity to that. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the kind of most basic here is, is sort of to ignore fairness and, and to focus just on efficiency in its own right. Uh, and there you might start with some kind of underlying base model. Uh, but as you start to bring fairness and equity into the equation, there are a couple of different ways that you can go and a couple of different axes you can think about this on. Uh, for instance, you could start with your kind of program as you've conceptualized it and think about, well, what's the marginal cost of achieving fairness? If I'm planning to target the, the 100 most uh, high-risk individuals for, for some adverse outcome to, to help them with some program, um, I might think, and, and then I find that the way I've targeted those individuals is, uh, is unfair by some definition, I might think about expanding my program to bring in underrepresented groups, um, and that might kind of conceptualize as some marginal cost of fairness. Of course, many programs, their resources really are truly constrained. They have a certain budget and staffing that they have available, and so then you have to start thinking more explicitly about equity and efficiency trade-offs. Kind of on the other axis here, uh, we also think about how um, if you equalize some of these fairness metrics, you might approve, start to improve outcomes for different groups kind of in parallel, uh, sort of at the same rates. Uh, but that might not actually close the gaps of underlying disparities um, in actual adverse outcomes. And so if you want to actually uh, think about closing those gaps, you might even have to focus uh, even more intently um, than simply equalizing some of these metrics like recall. Uh, so we kind of thought about providing this menu of, of different options to, to stakeholders. Um, which brings us to the, to the case study that I want to talk a, a little bit about today. And here we're actually thinking about kind of the cycle of reincarceration and how it relates to underlying unmet needs in different populations. Uh, and the city of Los Angeles has actually been doing a, a decent amount of uh, kind of innovative work thinking about how do we find alternatives to traditional prosecution uh, that might um, lead to tailored interventions that can help address these unmet needs and sort of break this cycle. And so these are things like community justice and restorative justice, uh, but also things like connections to, to social service interventions, to, to treatment plans, to drug diversions. Uh, unfortunately, kind of tailoring these interventions to particular cases uh, is pretty resource intensive for their office. And, and so they worked with us to think about a predictive modeling problem, identifying 150 individuals um, 
for the, the next six months who they, they could look at uh, developing these sort of interventions for. Um, this slide's really just here kind of as a placeholder to, to remind me that uh, you know, there, there's a lot of details about the modeling. Those are kind of in the paper because here I really want to focus a lot more on uh, the kind of fairness and, and bias aspects of the work. So we built this model. We selected it based on kind of efficiency and, and here the precision at the top 150 uh, and then took a look at its implications for equity by that recall uh, based metric um, across uh, racial and ethnic subgroups and found pretty concerning considerable underrepresentation of uh, Hispanics and individuals with unknown race and ethnicity. And so to, to think about addressing this, uh, we looked at how we could apply um, kind of a, a post hoc analysis and um, think about different thresholds across different subgroups to, to try to uh, better reach um, our, our equitable goals and, and balance those against the, the goals of efficiency. Um, and so this kind of brings us back to that menu of options where we then provided uh, various um, different possibilities and different trade-offs that uh, the city could think about um, putting into to implementation, right? Do they want to take the base model as it is, um, even though it, it has uh, the, it departs from um, our concept of, of fairness in this way. Uh, do they want to see if they can find more resources to expand the program uh, to, to try to address this? Um, and here we, we saw that the expansion that would be required is, is about 50% over uh, the initial program and, and they really are very constrained in their resources. Um, so we kind of ended up focusing more on uh, the uh, kind of current scale of the program and, and looking at the, the options there, either equalizing recall or focusing even more on uh, the populations with the higher underlying uh, um, kind of rates the, to try to reduce disparities over the longer run. Um, and so thinking about the, the kind of current scale options, we also looked at the, the trade-offs between equity and efficiency uh, in this program. And, and so looking at these kind of three options, the, the base model uh, had about a 73% recall, while the, the two models that were adjusted for um, more, uh, to try to achieve more equity, um, only saw a, a kind of moderate, um, really pretty small uh, drop off in, in efficiency. Um, down to around 71%. And so LA is thinking about, uh, or is working on, on kind of implementation of um, the, uh, the third version of the model to, to try to reduce disparities. Um, and we're, uh, of course, doing a lot of uh, research thinking about extensions of this work. So I just wanted to, uh, of course, thank the uh, many wonderful co-authors of this work and um, uh, thank you all and uh, uh, give you some links to, to see more. Um, thank you.